Hello guys, this is The Gaming Revolution here, and yesterday we finally got the gameplay trailer for Firebase Z, the brand new Zombies map releasing next week on February the 4th. In this video I am going to be going over all of the important information that you need to know from this gameplay trailer, as well as some new information pertaining to the Wonder Weapon, and also the boss zombie that Treyarch have released today. So I'm going to play the trailer for you guys right now so that you can recap yourself on it, and then I will We'll come back in a second to talk all about it. Weaver, I'm still in the field. I have to meet a contact. I am not proud of everything I have done, but I am proud of what I am doing. Omega must be stopped, no matter the personal cost to people like you and I. No, my friend. They are the ones who are going to pay. have already opened their new worlds. Ravanov, my team has reached the village. Requiem, welcome to Vietnam. We have to get out of here now. On the move. I'd pick up the pace if I were you, for Max's sake. Okay, so before I get into all of the juicy information, I just have to say that that was an absolute banger trailer, and the map immediately looks miles better than D Machina. Don't get me wrong, D Machina is a good map, but I think it's pretty mediocre. I think the reason as to why Cold War Zombies is so fun is mainly due to the gameplay mechanics and the fluidity of the mode, and due to the fact that they've kind of made everything very easy and easy to jump into. Everything on D Machina flows very well, isn't too difficult, and doesn't really require much thinking power. However, I think that the location itself is very bland and boring apart from the dark ether, but Firebase Z is the complete opposite of that. The Vietnam location is so much more interesting and the environment itself is so much more coloured and saturated. Okay, so let's get into the trailer itself. So it starts off by saying Outpost 25 Vietnam 1984. However, it seems like we don't actually start the map on Outpost 25, but we instead start in this village. So this village is directly from the campaign of the game, specifically within the Fractured Jaw campaign mission. So Treyarch have just reused this village as a part of this zombies map, and to be honest, I don't have any issue with this. I've seen some people complaining on Twitter about reused assets and stuff like that, but it makes sense for Treyarch to save time, and at the end of the day, the campaign is just a linear mission, so if they reuse this area as a part of a zombies map, but maybe it's slightly changed, it's going to play entirely different to how it did in the campaign. You're going to get a completely brand new experience, and at the end of the day, all of the original Zombies maps in World of War and some of the ones in Black Ops 1 as well, such as Ascension and Kino de Toten, were based off of multiplayer maps and or campaign missions. So I have no issue with this whatsoever, but yeah, it does appear as though this is going to be where you spawn in. I've seen some people suggesting that maybe it could work like a No Man's Land, and then you have to teleport over to outpost 25 but we do see this shot of the village here and it appears to be taking place around a late afternoon it's not quite evening but you know the sun is starting to set it is definitely darker than it is within the campaign where it seems to just be the middle of the day i do like the atmosphere i do think that it is slightly too dark i do kind of like that sunny vietnam atmosphere now in the back there i believe that might be the pack-a-punch machine i believe the pack-a-punch machine is going to be based in 
in the village and not the Omega outpost. I am wondering though if we're going to be able to explore all of these different buildings or some of them are going to be closed off because you can see that some areas are closed off that you are able to access within the campaign mission and you have a lot of debris at the back there where there is some fire. The campaign mission does take place around 10 years earlier so it has been quite some time and it is a lot more damaged now as the place has started to wear down. I don't really know as to why this area is going to be a part of this zombies map because Outpost 25 takes place in Kaysan which is around a two and a half hour drive away from this village which takes place by Firebase Ripcord also in Vietnam. At the top you do see that there is a red light on a panel next to this opening and I think that is for a trap. The door seems to be caged up so yeah that could be a trap right there and there is also a magnum wall by. We then see this character here and this character is Captain Sergei Ravenov and obviously we got a piece of intel about this before the trailer released and essentially he is an Omega informant supplying Samantha and Requiem with intel about this Omega 25 outpost. So he is betraying the Russians and quite interestingly on this piece of intel Omega were very certain that he was not betray the motherland Russia. And as you can see he is monitoring all of these computer screens of Outpost 25. So this character will be talking to us and helping us throughout the easter egg or maybe even betraying us. We will just have to wait and see and I'll talk about this more in a little second. He does seem very sketchy though. I really won't be surprised if he is up to no good and he is not just playing Omega but he's playing us as well for his own personal goal. We don't really know. I think he is actually based in this building from the village though by where the pack a punch is around. We then see a CGI shot of a cinematic cutscene. I presume this is from the intro cutscene so hopefully we do see the intro cutscene before this map releases. If not we will just have to wait until February 4th to see it but Samantha has infiltrated Outpost 25 and she sneaks behind this Omega character on the roof above and jumps down to take him out. We then see Ravenov watching his screen as one of the Omega characters is near this portal and Samantha then takes him out. So yeah obviously Ravenov has been supplying intel to Samantha Maxis so that she was able to go en route to this location. So he is probably in her ear letting her know what to do and yeah we get this pretty brutal scene where Samantha stabs him in the neck. She then looks into this dark ether portal and a hand sticks out and she gets very creeped out as the boss zombie appears to attack her. I'll talk more about the boss zombie in a little second though as we do have more information. We then see a shot of Requiem infiltrating the village and there is an ammo crate just below and there is also a dark ether arrow on the wall so the arrows are going to be leading us to power similar to on D Machina once again and there are also the hammer and sickle flags about the map and let me know in the comment section down below if you notice anything that I do not notice within this video. We then get a very brief shot of Quick Revive so I think Quick Revive is going to be located in the spawn of the map and we then see Ravenoff in this room talking to our characters. So yeah, I think he is going to be located in the village and he's going to be assisting us and talking to us. We then see this Origins looking zombie, but you can see that there's a mix of different Viet Cong zombies and also Omega group zombies. But yeah, not much is going on here. We just see a bunch of shots of this area and there is the Dark Ether portal that will then take us over to the Omega facility. So I don't know if you have to stay within the village for a certain amount of time and then you can go within the portal or whether it will be there straight away or maybe you have to build it or activate something or power it on. I would assume that there is going to be one of these dark ether crystal generators that Omega are using as an infinite power source. I assume that we're probably going to have to charge that on in the village to actually activate the teleporter. But you can see Requiem go through the teleporter and they end up in Outpost 25, which as I said earlier is around a two and a half hour drive away from Firebase Ripcord and we are now in Kaysan. And you can see that it appears as though they have reused assets from Array that I assume they've just taken straight from Blackout in Black Ops 4. So I guess this map is kind of an Array remake and also a remake of the campaign mission. I'm not really too bothered by this though. You do also notice some Dark Ether arrows in the background. Once again, I think they will be leading to these Dark Ether generators. Now we do see a shot of a Tombstone in the background too. So this is where Tombstone is going to be located. The brand new perk on this map. I'd assume you can also get it from a Wonder Fizz if a Wonder Fizz is going to be 
on this map as well. There is also a wall by back there. I can't tell exactly which it is because it is a little bit blurry because it is in the distance. I think it is either the KSP 45 or maybe even the MP5. I can't exactly tell though, so you can let me know what you think it is in the comment section. We then get a sky shot of the map and once again you can see some dark ether arrows down there and there is a crashed helicopter in the center of the map on the pad. I'm wondering if within the easter egg we might be able to rebuild the helicopter or something like that and that is how we are going to escape. Well definitely not this helicopter because it's very damaged but maybe we could take some parts from it to build a new one or something like that to maybe repair another one that's found elsewhere on the map and there is a really interesting thing to notice because there is a dark ether ring going around the map. So I assume this is going to work like Battle Royale. Maybe at the end of the Easter egg, the ring will start closing, very similar to Battle Royale, and we will have to escape in time or something like that. I don't know why this ring is here. I don't know. There's not really any explanation for it. Obviously, there is the Dark Ether Chamber, and this dome is holding the Dark Ether in its place, and maybe that is what's causing the ring to go around it. We do see that there are these buildings from Array with the satellites on top, so these control rooms will likely be used within the easter egg to signal to other people. We then see a shot here and there are a bunch of palm trees in the background and there are also these metal gates. There is another wall by two. I think this wall by is the Grozer and we get a shot from the other side there where we see the dome in the background. Okay so now we see a shot of the boss zombie. So I believe this boss zombie is called a Mimic because Treyarch have just released this intel today coming from Omega. I don't know why it's written in English though but it says it's from Dr. Dimitri and it's dated the 11th of May 1984 so I don't know when this map is going to be set because we know that Outpost 25 was completed in February specifically February the 15th so that means this map is going to be dated probably after May 1984. It says identification specimen K7 1924 species unknown. It says subject specimen recovered from the dark ether dimension on May 1984 subject recovered by minor Tobias Shrek. It definitely doesn't say Shrek. What the hell does that say? Shrunk? Shork? I can't even read that. Anyways, it says subject was captured alive. And then it says, while caged, subject transformed into several common objects seemingly at will. Weight of subject changed based on the object it transformed into. So the subjects that it transformed into were a crate, an equipment storage container, a chair, a rifle, and an ethereum containment canister. It says subject was terminated after escaping containment. It says with additional research we could potentially adapt creatures camouflage abilities for human warfare. Implications are massive. Prior to termination subjects use fenicile tentacles to attack soldiers as it stormed through the base. Tentacles appear to operate independently from arms and legs. Subjects able to extend tentacles and grapple unsuspecting humans. Upon examination DNA is part human. The disfigured face observed in all autopsy report resembled that of Private Glaskov, missing in action last month in the Dark Ether Dimension. So that appears to be how this creature has formed. This Omega informant obviously went into the Dark Ether and had started to corrupt and mutate within the Dark Ether and I guess that is how this creature has formed. And yeah, so basically this boss is going to work like Prop Hunt from Multiplayer where it is literally going to be able to transform into other objects and then surprise you and come out of nowhere and attack you. We did receive this post the other day showing these dark ether canisters and then this boss just sprung out of it. So yeah, this is going to be very weird. It's literally just going to be able to hide as different objects. Something we have never seen in zombies before. This is a completely new mechanic and it really does beg the question if they could add in prop hunt into zombies like we have it within multiplayer where it could be to do with this boss. I would love to see prop hunt in zombies. You know, we could play as Requiem versus the Mimic. Sort of like turn from Black Ops 2 zombies but instead of just being a normal zombie, you could be the Mimic and then you have to hide on the map. So it could be the Mimics versus Requiem. I think that would be an awesome mode. I really do think that Treyarch are going to add prop hunt into zombies, seeing as this boss is literally turning into props. And the interesting thing about this is this boss was actually leaked before release. So I think this was at some point planned to maybe even be on D-Machina, but it was cut from the game and saved for this map instead. But yeah, it has these two tentacles on its back and it's able to grapple with them. So it's going to be able to move very fast as it grapples and 
it can probably sling you and whip you with them as well because it does resemble the Magua due to it mutating in a similar way to the Apothecans in the Dark Aether, I assume that its blue mouth will be its weak spot where you will be able to deal the most damage. So maybe you can only shoot it when it opens its mouth. Oh, and uh, this mimic zombie reminds me very much of the Mutchler on the Darkest Shore in World War II zombies. It's very similar aesthetically wise. It also has the two different things on its back that it seems like it's going to be able to whip us with and mantle with. And it seems like it would probably move in a similar way too. So yeah, it does seem like since it was rumored that Sledgehammer Games were initially working on this game before Treyarch took over and they were helping out Ravensoft, then maybe they did play a big role in the inspirations for some of these zombie types, especially because the Elder Gods also very much resemble the Panzer Morder final boss on the final Reich. But this creature too is also made up of a bunch of different zombies and creatures. There's multiple different heads that are sticking out of it. So considering according to Omega, this boss can turn into a rifle, then maybe when you are spinning the mystery box, there is a rare chance that when you pull a weapon, this boss could actually be hiding as a weapon and it could surprise you similar to the jump scare on D Machina, but this time the boss starts attacking you. Also, it does make notes that Omega are trying to harness this camouflage technology for war efforts. So that is what we may see in future Zombies DLC. It does also basically make prop hunts from multiplayer canon to the storyline because now there is an actual explanation for why people are able to turn into objects, which is very weird to think about. Anyways, the next shot appears to show one of these dark ether chambers and I think it works similar to the Groth modules on Garod Krovi where zombies would start attacking them and then you have to kill the zombies to charge up the Groth module and that's how you unlock the Pack-a-Punch on that map. Well, I think to turn on the power on this map, you will instead have to activate these Dark Aether Crystals and then zombies will start raiding the place and attacking you and attacking the device and then you just have to kill them just like the Groth modules to charge up the Dark Aether Crystal. I assume that there's going to be three different Dark Aether Chambers on the map and we will have to power up each of them to power up the map in a specific area. So probably after you charge it up, it will only turn on power in the nearby vicinity. But yeah, you do see as the character is shooting the zombies, they do appear to be charging up the crystal and then it turns from being blue to being purple once it is fully charged. And this room right here looks very similar to Summit. So yeah, I guess it is kind of inspired by Summit. This room is laid out in a very similar way, especially with the maps on the wall as well. And once again, we have all these different computer screens so we can kind of see what's going on on other areas of the map. Also, a huge thank you to Magua on Twitter Twitter, but he found out that on one of the computer screens, it appears to have a red marker pointing to Germany. As you guys know in the D-Machina intro, one of the locations on Grigori Weaver's computer screen is in fact Berlin. So maybe it could be hinting that the next map releasing after Firebase Z could be this rumoured Berlin map where we might explore the streets of Berlin, but a small portion of it could in fact be Kino de Toten. So maybe Berlin could be the next map or it could be one coming later on. But yeah, after it is charged on, this sort of sonic wave blasts out, which I'm assuming turns on the power in the area. But yeah, it looks very beautiful. There is also a war buy down there of an assault rifle. I can't tell exactly what it is. I think it might be the FFAR, but honestly, it's kind of hard to tell. So once again, you can let me know down in the comment section down below what do you think it is. I am not a guns expert. Alternatively, maybe these Dark Aether generators are what activates the teleporter, or maybe the Pack-a-Punch, or maybe it activates the Pack-a-Punch and the power. Maybe it's not exclusive to the power. Then we see some shots of the characters just gunning down the zombies in these trenches, and we get a look of this Dark Aether ring that goes around the map as well. Once again, I feel like this is going to work kind of like in Battle Royale once again, where the ring might close in or something like that, but it does appear as though the zombies are attacking from the distance, so maybe there's going to be a tower defense type thing with this, where zombies could start raiding from outside of the ring, and you then have to defend at the base. Similar to on Garod Krovi when you would lock down within the bunker where Pack-a-Punch is, maybe there's going to be some sort of similar mechanic with this base and the character has then placed a sentry gun at the top of this building here and we see this big missile also on the floor there and we get a look of all these trenches and yeah, this map does look aesthetically very pleasing. I'm pretty happy with the aesthetic here. We then see that the character gets the wonder weapon from the mystery box which is obviously 
pretty legendary rarity. Now, I thought that this would just be a mastercraft for the AK when we saw an image of it on the Season 1 Reloaded poster. Well, no, it turns out that this is the Wonder Weapon. Maybe it will be coming as a mastercraft for the AK as well. But basically, this Wonder Weapon is the rumoured Ray Rifle that has been leaked for quite some time. It was apparently going to come with the Machina. There was going to be an upgrade quest revolving a Raven and stuff like that. But I guess this Wonder Weapon was saved for this map instead. And it's a mix between an AK-47, the Ray Gun, and also the Wonder Wolf. So yeah, it's a very cool weapon. And Treyarch have also posted this blueprint for it over on Twitter. So you can see it says Dimitri down there. And I think it was made by Peck and Dimitri then. Or at least Peck was monitoring the project. But you can see it has the Barrel Assembly, which I believe is, you know, just like the Wonder Wolf. And there is the Elemental Converter. Basically, the standard version is just going to shoot these purple lasers. It really reminds reminds me of the Volk. I think it was a weapon in Advanced Warfare. I'm sure the upgrades are going to be very cool though. The weapon looks very, very cool, I have to say. And the thing is, on this blueprint, the weapon is given the name Reactive Avtomat is Lukhatel Kerle 84. And yeah, I probably butchered that pronunciation there, but it abbreviates to R-A-I-K-84, aka Ray K-84, which is a bit of wordplay on AK-47. So yeah, Yes, this is definitely the Ray Rifle, aka the Ray K84, the Ray Gun version of the AK. We then see a shot of this jump pad, and the character just leaps across the map, just like the Wonder Sphere under Eisendracker or the jump pads in the Biodome on Moon. Now, we did receive a poster about this, and it said that you can accidentally fling yourself into a wall. So, I guess when it flings you, you can accidentally die and fling yourself against a wall or into the wrong spot, but we get a really Really nice look at the map here as he flings across and you can see this massive satellite which I'm sure is going to tie into the easter egg there's no way it isn't and then there appears to be some sort of clock or something weird some sort of weird device on the satellite itself and then we see a shot of the character drinking tombstone and then we get a shot of the map and we can see all of the forested area this map by the way looks absolutely huge because we're going to be able to explore the full outpost 25 but we're also going to be able to explore all of the jungle jungle areas and the trenches outside of it and we're also going to be able to explore the full village from the campaign and there might even be some further areas but the character appears to call in the Napalm Strike Kill Streak, which is going to be a new kill streak which is releasing on February the 4th and then we see a Russian Mangler from Garod Krovi so they appear to be returning on this map I don't really know why somehow they have made a return from the Dark Aether once again the Manglers were actually leaked to be on D Machina they were found in the files of the game there is is in fact a leaked calling card that shows them as well so I guess they were cut from it and saved for this map so there's a ton of stuff from this map that was planned at some point to be on D Machina because it was leaked ages ago such as the Ray Rifle the Russian Mangler and there was some other stuff as well so maybe we could see some further stuff that was leaked and we didn't end up seeing on D Machina releasing future DLC maps but it does appear to be a bit different than the one on Garod Krovi it does shoot orange blasts now instead of blue and it is an Omega Mangler this time it does seem like like there's going to be a lot of different zombie types on this map. We might even see some monkey zombies as well because they are on the graffiti on D Machina. There is this massive gorilla and we also have the ethereal monkeys in the dark ether. So I won't be surprised if we also see some monkeys as the round five zombie type as well to get free max ammo. But finally at the end of the trailer we see an elder god which obviously spawns in in the dark ether on round 45 plus on D Machina. And yes it is returning as a boss. Many others and I had speculated that we would see this as a boss at some point in the future. I wonder if this is going to be the final boss fight when you complete the easter egg or before you get the ending cutscene and before you escape and exfil the map. Maybe we have to fight this boss or maybe this is just going to be a normal boss that spawns in on the map. But the thing is this boss on D Machina gives us a free max ammo so it appeared as though it was helping us but it appears to be attacking us here so I don't really know what is going on. However from the intel on D Machina it does say that the elder gods are starting to form different factions in the Dark Aether and the lost souls trapped in the Dark Aether are starting to worship different Elder Gods so it seems as though they are forming different armies and a great war is probably going to break out in the future once again similar to within the old Aether storyline between all of these different factions forming. But we do see that the Elder God is made up of the deceased. We do see a bunch of arms and heads sticking out of it as it's just a combination of all of the mutated and merged creatures in the Dark Aether. But yeah I really can't tell whether this is going to be the final boss or this is going to spawn in on the map naturally. 
Maybe it could even help us. Maybe it's going to be a friendly. We see him shoot this laser, but he doesn't actually shoot the characters. He appears to shoot somewhere in the background. So maybe these Elder Gods might actually help us. Who knows? At the end, though, we see this final shot of Ravenoth walking away, and Grigori Weaver talks over this, basically saying, do not harm Samantha Maxis, because Samantha has been captured by Omega. That is going to be the point of this Easter egg. We have a description that talks about how we're going to have to rescue Samantha before it is too late and exfil the map. So that's going to be the point of this map. However, Weaver is concerned that Ravenoth might harm Samantha, so it is setting up the possibility that Ravenoth might not be on our side. He might still betray us. Maybe he's betraying Omega and also us. So yeah, it seems like Samantha and also Weaver seem to have a very close connection. Weaver obviously cares a lot about her, and I wonder if maybe he adopted her or raised her. Since she entered this new universe after the universe was rebooted on Tag to Toten as a child, so how was she raised? He seems very overly protective of her. I do wonder though if we are going to rescue Samantha Maxis during this Easter egg, if she may be an operator, maybe if you complete the Easter egg you unlock her, or maybe she will be an operator in a future season's battle pass, maybe season 2. Especially because in the intro she does have a beanie on, and the attire she is wearing looks very much like what the other operators wear. I'm sure Eddie and Samantha will eventually be operators. I guess it is just a matter of when. But hopefully we do manage to save Samantha, although we do know that Samantha does have her ethereal powers once again from the poster of the map, so I wonder how that's going to all play out. And then we get the Firebase Z logo at the end, and the Dark Aether is starting to break out. So yeah, I think I have covered pretty much everything. There's not really too much to talk about other than that. Anyways, that's pretty much everything I have to talk about within today's video. Let me know down in the comment section down below if I have missed anything, and let me know what you think is going to happen within this Easter egg. Is Ravenoth going to betray us? Are we going to see a proper ending cutscene? Are we going to rescue Samantha, or will we fail? Is Samantha going to be safe? Is Samantha going to gain her ethereal powers back, and if so, how is that going to play out? Do you think that the Elder God is going to be the final boss fight, or do you think that it's just going to be a normal boss on the map, or do you think it could even be friendly and help us, because different factions are forming in the Dark Aether, and there is a great war that is inevitably going to break out once again, so maybe some of the Elder Gods could actually be on our side and helping us. I'm really interested to see how the future storyline plays out. I mean, after all, Victus are in the Dark Aether, so they could potentially make up these Elder Gods themselves as everything in the Dark Aether is merging together. Anyways, thank you for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're not the latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. Anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.